Who's your biggest competitor in football? The striker you're up against in today's game? Or maybe it's your teammate who is fighting for your position? Think again, the only true rival that you need to beat today is the player that you were yesterday. Now, too many players waste their energy comparing themselves to others. A teammate, an opponent, maybe a big name player that they've admired from a distance. Now, it is natural to admire others that are doing well. After all, we live in a world where comparison is everywhere we look. But ask yourself, does comparing yourself to others actually help you improve? Or does it create frustration, self-doubt, anxiety? Now, do you sometimes struggle to feel confident because someone else seems to have it all together? Or maybe you get frustrated because you're not where you think you should be in your game or your career. Now, if you feel this way, you're not alone. These feelings are all too common, but they often hold you back. And why? Because your focus is in the wrong place. And in this video, we're going to explore how focusing on personal growth and self-improvement, not comparison, is the key to unlocking your full potential as a footballer. Now we're going to dive into the neuroscience behind growth, the mental and physical benefits of competing with yourself, and how this mindset shift can elevate your game to a whole new level. Now let's look at why comparison is a trap. Now it's human nature to look at others and measure ourselves against them. But when you spend too much time comparing yourself to others, we're not being real about what we see. And what I mean by this is that first of all, everyone's journey is different, different backgrounds, different training environments, even different natural abilities. Comparing yourself to someone else isn't just unfair, it's actually unproductive. Imagine comparing your performance to someone who's been playing professionally for years when you just made it out of the academy. You're not looking at the same timeline, so why would you expect the same results? And on top of this, your brain has a natural way of focusing on your negatives. So what it tends to do is downplay your attributes and build up the attributes of the person that you're comparing against. So the only fair comparison that you can make is to your own progress. And here's something interesting from neuroscience. When we compare ourselves to others and feel inferior, our brain activates the stress response. Our cortisol levels spike and instead of feeling motivated, we start to feel overwhelmed. We start to feel anxious. And in some cases, we feel defeated. And just let me ask you this. Do you play better when you're stressed or when you're calm and confident? And now, when we look at the science of self-improvement, this is where things get really interesting. This is where your brain is wired to grow. Now, neuroplasticity is the process where your brain changes and adapts in response to learning and experience. Now, each time you learn something new or you improve upon a skill, your brain is rewiring itself to make it easier to access this skill in the future. Now, what this means is that every time you focus on getting a little bit better than you were yesterday, you are literally changing the structure of your brain. The more you practice, the stronger the neural pathways in your brain become. It's like building a muscle. If you do 10 push-ups today and 11 tomorrow, you're not making a massive change all at once. But over time, these incremental improvements add up. And the same goes for mental performance. With consistent and focused effort, your brain becomes more efficient. It becomes quicker, more resilient under pressure. And do those things that you've trained automatically and instinctively. So instead of stressing about how far ahead someone else is, focus on where you are right now and how you can build from there. Each small step forward strengthens your brain's ability to perform at a higher level. And this brings us on to the compound effect of small gains. And it's here that we need to think about consistency because one of the most powerful concepts in personal growth is the compound effect. Small incremental improvements that are repeated consistently over time lead to massive results. And in football, this is crucial. Think about some of the best players. Think about 
Luka Modric or Angolo Kante or Karim Benzema. They didn't suddenly become world-class overnight. They got there by making small incremental gains day after day, year after year. It is the sum of these small improvements that made them the player that they are today. Now your brain thrives on this kind of consistency. Each time you improve just by 1%, you're building the foundations for greater success. And it's not about making huge leaps either. It's about making steady, manageable progress that compounds over time. And here's the best part. Every time you improve, your brain rewards you with dopamine. And the release of dopamine makes you feel good. And then this feel good feeling about the progress you're making motivates you to keep going. It's a wonderful cycle where progress breeds more progress. But what about the dangers of stagnation? Now, while self-improvement is the key to success, stagnation is the enemy. If you're standing still, you're not maintaining, you are falling behind. But here's the thing, stagnation often happens when you are too focused on the competition. Now think about it, if you're constantly measuring yourself against someone else's progress, you're gonna lose sight of your own. You might get discouraged, or even worse, you give up altogether because you're not seeing the results that you want, and certainly not as quickly as you'd like. Now this is where mental resilience comes in. Football is as much a mental game as it is physical, probably more so, and the strongest players are the ones that are able to keep going when things are not going perfectly. They focus on their own journey, knowing that growth isn't a straight line, and it's the players who keep pushing. Even when the gains are small, these are the players that end up at the top. And by avoiding the trap of comparison, you can focus all of your energy on becoming the best version of you. And along with this, when you're focused on self-improvement, you build confidence. And why? It's because you're in control. Now you cannot control how talented someone else is or how much training time they've had, but you can control how much effort you've put into getting better. And with each improvement, whether it's mental, physical, or tactical, your confidence grows. You know that you're making progress and that knowledge gives you the edge. Every time you step out onto that pitch, you're not there to beat someone else. You're there to beat the player you were last week or last game or even last season. And that is a game that you can always look to win. Now here's a quick analogy of this. Think of personal growth like running a marathon. Now you don't start off by comparing yourself to the person who is gonna ultimately win the race. You focus on your pace, your breath, your endurance. Each mile that you complete is progress. And if you're running faster or more efficiently than you did the day before, you're winning. And similarly in football, every training session, every match, this is an opportunity to improve on your previous performance. You don't need to compare yourself to the top goal scorer in the league. You need to compare yourself to who you were yesterday, the player you were in yesterday's training session or yesterday's match. Take a player like Virgil van Dijk, for example. When he started, he was not the world-class defender that we know today. But each year, each match, he focused on one thing, improvement. Whether this was his positioning, his decision-making, his fitness, he worked on getting better at his game, not what someone else is doing, this is what made him the leader and the player that he is on the pitch today. So now I want you to think about your last game or your last training session. What one small thing can you improve on today? Is it your passing accuracy? Is it your ability to stay calm under pressure? Or maybe you look to improve your focus during the final minutes of a match. Whatever it is, write it down. And in fact, drop it in the comments below and let me know what you're gonna work on. When you write things down like this, you become accountable to yourself. Remember, it's not about being perfect. It's about being better than you were yesterday. And if you found this video useful, please drop a like as it really helps to support my channel. And do make sure you subscribe, stay hungry, and become the fearless footballer that you have within you.